Some iconic movies feature really cool cars you can own without breaking the bank. Today I'm going to be showing you guys five cars from the movies you didn't know you can afford. If you're new here, I'm Christian. This is Vehicle Virals. Consider subscribing for some weekly automotive content. Now, let's begin. The first car on the list is the Vader G35. It was seen in the ultimate supervillain movie, Suicide Squad. It was driven by the one and only Joker. At a glance, this car can be perceived as a multi-million dollar exotic car. Think again. What if I told you that the Vader G37 uses a 12-year-old donor car that can be purchased for less than $8,000? Yep. The donor car is actually the third generation Infiniti G35, hence the name Vader G35. Here's what you'll need to purchase to own your very own Vader G35. An $11,000 body kit from Vader, a Florida-based company. Then add a $3,000 interior conversion, a nice paint job, and a couple thousand dollars for the installation of the kit. Total all that up, and for less than $40,000, you can have your very own Lamborghini. I mean, Vader G35. Funny how my non-car guy friends always refer to Joker's car as a Lamborghini. Not every supercar you see out there is a Lamborghini. Just saying. Moving on. The next car on the list is the 2006 Audi A8 W12. It's featured in one of my favorite movies of all time, The Transporter 2. It's driven by Jason Statham. Man, that guy is just such a badass. After his BMW 735 blew up into complete bits in the first Transporter movie, he then started using the Audi W12 for the next two installments. And this is quite the perfect car for his role. As a professional freelance carrier driver that always seems to get into some sticky situations. The car is an absolute beast. It's a 6 liter 12 cylinder engine that produces 450 horsepower. So the original pre-production idea for the Audi W12 was to get two V6 engines, merge them together, you get the W12 engine. Makes sense, doesn't it? Right. When the W12 first debuted back in 2006, it MSRP for over $120,000. Depreciation definitely took a toll on this vehicle. And now you can get one for less than $20,000. I'll tell you something, if gas mileage isn't an issue, then that's a killer deal. The third car on the list is the Chevy Camaro. It was first seen in the first Transformers movie back in 2006, played by the character Bumblebee. Bumblebee first starts off as an old, beat-up, helpless 1977 Camaro, but later swaps himself for a modern Camaro after being insulted. I myself remember watching the Transformers movie back in 2006 and completely losing it once I got to see the new Camaro. It was only a concept at the time showed by GM to stir up some excitement and some anticipation before it ultimately became a production car in 2010. While Mustang fans might not think much of the Camaro, there is no question that a whole new generation fell in love with the Camaro thanks to the Transformers. It merged an emotional attachment with both the character and the car, which played a massive role when it came to the successful sales of the Camaro once it debuted. You can own one today for less than $10,000. You might even get lucky and find one with the Transformers package that once cost $995 to add on. Just don't expect it to turn into a 16-foot robot, okay? Next car on the list is the Lotus Esprit S1, driven by Roger Moore, the actor that played James Bond in the movie The Spy That Loved Me. I'm sure you guys know who James Bond is now. I know what you guys are thinking. I can't possibly be old enough to know anything about that movie. The truth is, I've actually watched that movie and pretty much every single other James Bond movie that has ever existed. In the film, the Lotus Esprit is highly armed. It can shoot out torpedoes, cannons, and it can go underwater. Talking about underwater. The car was greatly known for the underwater scene where the tires fold in and fins come out, followed by an intense action sequence. Six Lotus body shells were used for the movie, one of which was sealed for the underwater scenes, with two drivers inside of it for the movement of the vehicle. You can buy a very similar Lotus Esprit S1 for less than $40,000. Or you can go for one of the later models, the ones in the 90s, uh, for less than $20,000. Just make sure not to take it underwater. Leave that for the movies. The fifth and last car on the list is the Mini Cooper, which was featured in the movie The Italian Job. 
driven by Mark Wahlberg, the team mastermind and thief that seeks revenge for the murder of his mentor. The other two Mini Coopers are driven by his team, one being Jason Statham. Jason sure does like to act in car movies. Most people probably won't find a Mini Cooper as exciting as the other cars on this list. But let me tell you from personal experience, this is by far one of the most fun cars to drive nowadays. Mark Wahlberg said it felt like he was driving a high powered go-kart. And for those that didn't know, Mini Cooper is actually owned by BMW, a company that's known for fine automotive engineering. It almost seemed as if the movie The Italian Job served as a full length advertisement for the Mini Cooper. It was a two hour commercial for the Mini Cooper pretty much. You can find a Mini Cooper relatively cheap. You can get a 2003 model for less than $5,000. If you opt for a 2014 and up model, you can find them for less than $20,000. If you ever get to test drive a Mini Cooper, then you'll realize why it's truly a special car. Well guys, that was a video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. It'll greatly help out my small channel if you do. Thanks for taking your time to watch this video. I am truly grateful for every single one of you guys that support me. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you guys next time.